Hi there. Welcome to this information session about the Alps Three Countries in Three Days trek taking place from the 6th to the 10th of June 2024. My name's Jenny. I'm from Different Travel. I'm here to you here today to talk to you about this trek and to give you a bit of an idea of the itinerary and what to expect on it. So it's a um, three day trek, um, although the actual trip itself lasts for five days and it covers parts of the famous Tour de Mont Blanc, which is the circular walking route around Mont Blanc. You'll be crossing through three countries, Italy, France and Switzerland, and you'll be going through a lot of varied terrain with grassy valley paths, rocky mountain ridges, um, lots of hills up and down and up, up to an altitude of 2,537 metres. You're going to see spectacular scenery on your way, stunning views of snow-capped Mont Blanc, which is the highest mountain in Western Europe, glaciers, ancient, um, <clears throat> excuse me, quaint alpine villages, pine forests. You'll come across wildflowers, birds, wildlife along the way. And because you're going through three different countries, you'll also get a little bit of a insight into some of the just slight differences between these three European countries. So the map here gives you a indication of the route you'll be taking with Mont Blanc in the centre um, and you'll be starting from uh, Cormayeur and going round and ending up near Chamonix. Now, before I go into the itinerary in greater detail, I just want to quickly touch on different travels, come different travels, health and safety assurance. Um, your health and safety is really our top priority and we always take steps to make sure that you have a memorable experience as well as a safe one. We want to um, assure you that we constantly monitor and follow the advice of the British Common Foreign Wealth Development Office, who provide recommendations and advice to British travellers about travel to certain destinations. Now, we will never operate a trip in an area where there is a clear and pre present risk to the team. And that could be due to a health outbreak, political instability, natural disasters or anything else. And so if travel restrictions in either the UK or Switzerland did affect safe travel, then we would look to either postpone or cancel the trip. Um, if we postponed it, we would book you on a trip and on new departure dates. If we, you cancelled it, if we cancelled it, then obviously you would get your money back. Just want to also mention that at the time of travel, there may be enhanced safety and security measures in airports. You may find things like bag drop taking a bit longer than useful. And there is always a possibility of needing to pr provide a health certificate or proof of vaccination. But if anything like that does crop up, we'll let you know in good time. So there's some images here, which are just going to give you a little bit of a taster of what to expect on this trek. As you can see, um, they're absolutely stunning views of mountains, streams, beautiful meadows and pastures. So on Thursday, the 6th of June, which is day one, you'll be flying from London to Geneva and then transferring to Cormayeur in Italy. The journey time from Geneva to Cormayeur is about one and a half hours. You'll pass through the Mont Blanc Tunnel en route. And then once we get to Cormayeur, you'll check into your hotel. And then in the evening, we'll have a welcome dinner and a briefing with the guide to give you an indication of what you're going to expect on the next few days. So on Friday, you'll start trekking and we will transfer up to Arnuva and then we'll be hiking up to the Grand Col Ferré, which is the highest point of your trek at 2,537 metres. So at least it gets that bit out of the way early on. Um, this is the border between Italy and Switzerland, and you'll have spectacular views across the valley. Now, from there, you'll descend into the Swiss Val Ferret. You'll pass through scenes of traditional rural life. You'll have open meadows and farmland, but all set against this stunning mountain backdrop. And then at the end of our trek, which will be about 12 kilometres today and should take about seven to eight hours, um, you'll transfer to the charming village of Champex and you'll be staying overnight in a mountain chalet. So the ascent today is about 895 metres and you'll be descending just over 1,100 metres. As I say, the trek time will be around about seven to eight hours. It does always depend on the group themselves and what their general pace is like, but that's a rough average. So just a few more pictures here, just to show you some different scenes and um, hopefully make you feel that you would love to be out there in these mountains. On Saturday, um, we'll move from Champex to Trion, 
we'll hike from the Champex Valley to the Trion Valley and go through the Alpine pastures of Bovine and also across a balcony trail, which is above the Rhone Valley. So you'll see vineyards and mountain peaks of the Bernays Oberland and steep summits of the Combin Massif. And then we'll descend through shade of larch trees and arrive in the Col de la Forclaz. This is a key passage between the Rhone and the Trion Valleys. And tonight we'll be staying overnight in a refuge in Trion, um, which is in Switzerland. Your trekking time is going to be a similar time um, today, about seven to eight hours, with a 750 metre ascent and a 900, 900 metre descent. So Sunday, this is your third day of trekking, um, Trion to Tre le -Chon. So the final day starts with a steady climb and that takes us up to the border with France. And then you'll have, from there, you'll have views of the Mont Blanc range. Um, and then from there, you will go into France and trek right up to the village or the hamlet of Tre le -Chon, which is where the trek ends. Um, you'll be staying in a, um, I think in a chalet tonight, and you'll have a farewell dinner and um, so there'll be, you know, a nice opportunity to all congratulate, congratulate yourselves on having achieved this challenge. And it really is quite a challenge because, as you can see, you're trekking quite at some distance and you're doing an awful lot of um, hill climbing and walking down hills, which can be pretty hard on your knees, too. So um, it's definitely a challenge there for you to be very pleased that you've achieved so it's a similar trekking time, slightly longer distance, and your ascent and descent are around the thousand meter mark. So on Monday, um, you'll be transferring back to Geneva Airport to fly back to London. We don't yet know what time the flights are going to be. So hopefully, as long as they're later in the day, there'll be a bit of time to explore Chamonix um, in the morning before you drive to Geneva and take the flight back to London. There we go, just a few last pictures of, of some beautiful mountain valleys. So what about the climate and conditions on this trek? Well, the trek covers varied terrain and you'll be walking through everything from grassy valley paths to rocky mountain ridges. As you'll have gathered, there's a lot of hilly sections both up and down and you'll be reaching a maximum altitude of just over 2,500 metres. The climate um, is a bit unpredictable in alpine regions. And obviously we're just finding nowadays that the temperatures can be getting unexpectedly high. But up in the mountains, you would typically expect to have highest temperatures of about 20 to 25 degrees centigrade with evening lows of between 10 and 20. Um, hopefully you'll experience clear sunny days, but there is always the chance of rain. So you'll need to make sure that you are prepared for that. And you may find also that when you're out on the exposed mountain areas, it can be quite windy and you can get cold winds. So a windproof and waterproof jacket and a mid layer carried in your backpack is really important. So where are you going to be staying? So for the first night, you're going to be in a hotel uh, that'll be in twin ensuite rooms. And then for the following three nights, you'll be staying in a bit make a mixture of basic chalets and mountain refuges, which have mixed dorms. Um, single sex dorm accommodation may be available, but it does depend on bookings and what the breakdown is. So this can't be guaranteed. They will be providing you with basic bedding in the chalets and the refuges. So you won't need to bring anything with you, but you might prefer to bring a sleeping bag liner just so that you've got peace of mind and a little bit of extra comfort. It can also be quite useful if it is warm at night, then you can just have your liner and if you need to have a sleeping bag or a duvet on top of you or off you as you choose, you can do that more easily. Um, as I've said, it's en suite rooms in the hotels, but for the um, the nights on the trek, you will be um, having shared, sh shared, sorry, there will be shared toilets and shared showers in both the chalets and the mountain refuges. So what about meals? That's really important, especially on a trek like this where you're going to be using up a lot of energy every day. Well, breakfast will be typical continental style breakfast. So there will be breads and rolls. There'll be fresh meats and cheeses and jams and there'll be fruit and hot drinks and things like that. For lunch, we have an alpine picnic. Basically, we take carry everything with us and then we'll spread it all out when we find a suitable place to stop and make up our own sandwiches or baguettes. 
we'll have lots of things like local cheese and local meat and also things like biscuits and salad and fruit. In the evening, you'll be having dinner at your hotel or your um, auberge, and that can be quite meat focused, but also there'll be vegetables and pasta and rice and things like that. Typical European cuisine generally is what you should expect on this trip. If you have any dietary requirements um, or if you're vegetarian or vegan, um, please let us know anything like an allergy or an intolerance to certain foods. It's really important that you fill it in on your booking form and just let us know so we can make sure that we can accommodate that. As for the water, it is safe to drink the water. So you'll be able to fill up your water bottles at your accommodation. And obviously you can buy bottled water if you choose, but environmentally it's much better to have your own bottles to, to refill. And you might want to bring a few snacks with you from home just to pop in your day pack each day. So there's a few pictures here of, of some of our lunch times. As you can see, lots of nice freshly baked loaves of bread and then um, really nice opportunity for everybody to get together in the evening over dinner to, to chat and talk about how the day went. So how challenging is this trek? Well, it's graded as moderate to challenging for someone of a good level of fitness. And there are a few things that might make it challenging. One of the main things is that you're going to be trekking for long days over uneven mountain terrain. And as you've gathered, you're going to be climbing and descending for most of these days. So it's really important that you're trained and ready to deal with mountain ascents and descents. Um, you're also going to be staying in basic accommodation. Now, for some people, that might not be a challenge, but for other people, it can actually push them out of their comfort zone a bit. The thing is, we're all in it together. And that's the really nice thing about being in a group like this. You will find that everybody is quite supportive of each other. So if you do find that um, basic accommodation is something that's a little bit um, of a challenge to you, I'm sure you're not going to be the only person who's in that situation. In terms of training, please don't unest don't underestimate how important it is that you do lots of training. The more you do, the more your body is going to be able to recover quickly overnight and then you'll be ready for the next day. And um, on a trip like this in the mountains, you're going to find that there's not that much flat walking. So it is important that you've trained sufficiently for the hills. You must take responsibility for coming to the Alps as fit as you can be. So if you're wondering how you should train, the first thing is that just go out and start walking. And if you're not a regular walker, then start slowly with short distances. And as you get more comfortable, increase your mileage and add in more challenging terrain with the ultimate goal of walking comfortably for several consecutive days on hilly terrain with a backpack. Now, it's important to train with a backpack or really, I should say, your day pack that you're going to be carrying because then your body will be used to carrying that extra weight. Um, so certainly for the final few months of your training, do make sure that you take your backpack out with you with some things in it to, to give it an extra weight and so that it's representative of what you'll be doing on the trip. There's other activities that can complement but don't replace hill walking. That's things such as running, cycling, going to the gym, boot camps, etc. And also building up your core and leg muscle strength is important. So exercises such as squats, lunges, push-ups, planks and crunches will really enhance your training. And those kind of things can be done at home. You don't actually need to join the gym to do those sort of things. So you should take your training seriously. Arrive as fit as you can be, because that way you'll get the most out of this challenge. So what about your luggage? Well, your trekking luggage, um, so any spare clothes, toiletries, etc., will be transported by vehicle from accommodation to accommodation. Um, it should be packed in a soft bag or a hold all, not a suitcase, just because of the way that it's transported. It's much easier and flexible that way. And then you're going to need to carry a day pack, which would be a um, bag with a hip belt and a chest strap and approximately 25 to 35 litres in capacity. It's going to need to contain things like your water, camera, sunscreen, pack lunch or the components of the pack lunch, and then probably waterproofs and a base layer as well. Uh, it's important that you have that hip belt and chest strap on your day pack because it makes it a lot more comfortable, especially when you're walking for big distances. It means the weight is evenly distributed through your body and you'll therefore feel that that weight a lot less than you would otherwise do. 
So I'm going to go through a few FAQs. Um, there may be other questions that have arisen. If you find that you want to know something and I've not covered it, please feel free to get in touch with my colleagues in the office. They'll be more than happy to help. Uh, communication, uh, you're likely to have phone reception for most of the route and you'll find that there is Wi-Fi in a lot of places that you stop along the way. In terms of currency, bring mainly euros with you because they'll be obviously accepted in Italy and France and they are widely accepted in Switzerland. But quite a lot of this trek is actually in Switzerland. So bring some Swiss francs as well. Travel insurance is essential. You do need to arrange this yourself and you'll need to make sure that you're covered for trekking at altitude. In terms of footwear, you're going to need to wear proper walking boots. Um, train, trainers are unsuitable and walking shoes aren't suitable either because you're going to be up in the mountains um, going over quite a lot of uneven ground. You do need to have boots, which will give you that extra ankle support. There's no upper age limit on this trip. As long as you're fit enough to um, do it, then you're very welcome to join. Um, for younger people, the minimum age is 18. But if you have a 16 or a 17 year old who'd like to come along, they are welcome to as long as they're accompanied by a parent or a guardian. What if you have a medical condition? Can you still take part? The most important thing here is for you to speak to your GP and discuss it with them. Give them an idea of what you're going to be doing. Hopefully they're going to say yes, but um, it's really important that you do that and also that you declare any medical conditions on your booking form. Um, that is absolutely essential too, um, because we have medical screening, which we'll just check through and we need to, to have those. Obviously, everything is kept very confidential. So if you think this looks great, but you're not sure if you are the right kind of person to go on this trip, I've got a picture here which shows one of our groups and it just gives you an indication of the variety of people that do come on these trips. We have people who want to start healthier lifestyles. We have all ages from young couples through to new grandmothers. Sometimes we have parents whose kids have just left home and they suddenly find they've got time to do things that they didn't have the opportunity to, to do before. People who are keen trekkers, people who have never trekked in their life before. Um, some people who have only done luxury holidays, but are doing this to push themselves out of their comfort zone. Some people just think it looks like a great trek and they've always wanted to go to the Alps. So here's the opportunity. And then some people are really dedicated supporters of the, a particular charity and will take part in anything that that charity offers. So as you can see, it's a really broad mix of people and that's what makes it so nice to have a varied group with lots of people with different life experiences, which you'll all share along the way. So how much does it cost? Well, there's a £395 registration fee, which is payable at the time of booking. And once you've paid that, then you have a choice of three different options. You can take the self-funded route where you pay your own tour cost balance of £1,495 um, by the end of March 2024. And once you've um, committed to that, you're also welcome to fundraise separately for a charity of your choice, but that's not mandatory. I do need to point out, however, that any fundraising undertaken with this option may not be used to um, pay for your trip costs. They do need to be kept separate. There is the sponsorship option where you will fundraise £2,990 for your chosen charity, and then that includes your tour cost balance and also a £1,400 a £95 donation to your charity. Or there is the flexi option where you pay your own tour cost balance, again, £14.95, and you fundraise the same amount for a charity of your choice. And all of those have to be done by either the middle of March or the end of March, depending on the option that you've chosen. So what support will you get along the way? Well, if you're fundraising for a charity, then their fundraising team will help you through the challenge. They'll have lots of ideas and suggestions of ways that you can break that amount of money down into smaller chunks and things that you can do to help you achieve the goal. Um, you'll also be provided with a kit list, a full trip dossier, a training guide, discount vouchers and more. And there will be a pre-departure meeting um, with your teammates and um, your tour manager from different travel. And that's quite likely to be online because this trip is likely to um, attract people from all over the country. So if you're thinking this sounds great, how do I sign up? 
go to our website, www.different-travel.com, and you can either go to the link that's shown here on the screen or just click on um, the drop down menu for our trips. And if you go into the Europe section, you will find it there. Um, it's called the Alps, three countries in three days. And if you click on the book now button, which is on the bottom right hand side, you'll be able to fill in the um, all the information, pay your registration fee, and then you'll be booked on it. If you've got any other questions, um, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Um, you can email info at different-travel.com or you can give us a ring during office hours on 02381 449 447. So I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. I hope this has made you feel like this would be a challenge that you'd love to do. Um, and we look forward to seeing you on it. Thank you.